Hello and welcome to the second portion of how to use subtotal function in Google Sheets. This portion is a continuation of the earlier video um, discussing the basics of it and this is just a little bit on how to incorporate this into a report in a versatile way. Now I wanted to show a way that we could take this even a bit further and this is where it kind of reaches its like dynamic um, pinnacle if you will. When you start using this function to create um, intelligent functions that are, are looking at a selector and giving you results based on that. So we'll do this here. This is what we were working with the sum. We've created this drop down. Now this is called a data validation. Data validations can be done in any cell. All you have to do is you simply right click on the cell and you select data validation just below conditional formatting. It'll bring this up. We're going to always select lists for, from a range. We don't always select that. In this situation, we'll select lists from a range and I'll show you why in a second. Then you enter the ranges information. Now let me show you that range. What I did is I created a table. This table has the function codes for the um, subtotal function and it has the codes as well as what they're for. So the table that we just, or the data validation we just looked at, we just built, is referencing here. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take this information, this drop down here, and we're going to build it into a, um, a VLOOKUP cell. So we're going to do subtotal, you'll see up here at the top, subtotal. And then within that subtotal, we're nesting a VLOOKUP, and then we're giving the subtotal range. So the VLOOKUP is finding our function code. So we're looking up E54, which is this, the value of the dropdown, and we're looking into the range 84 through 80, AE14, which is up here. From there, we're putting 2, because in the VLOOKUP function, you put the um, the column index of what your which data you want. So we're saying out of these columns, there's two columns. The second column, AE, is where we're going to get the number. So it's going to return that. And false is based on is it sorted or not. So typically you're going to want this to be false unless your data is specifically sorted in a specific way. Um, but as in this situation, you want it to be false. And then you're going to close that parentheses. So now this VLOOKUP, you can see here by highlighting it, it's finding 9. So it's looking for sum in here, and it's finding 9, which we know from earlier is correct. So this, is, this result here is going to be 9. And then this, F4 through F44, we know from earlier, is our range. So this is now telling it to sum F4 through F44. Now if we go in here and we change this, and we say, well, this is an interesting thing. We want to average the results. We can average it the same way. Now, you'll notice down here I have ignore hidden results, so if we hide these results here, we get a different result. Now the ignore hidden results, or, or ignore hidden rows section here, all we've done is the exact same function except we've added 100 plus. So it's adding 100, so we know from earlier, if we highlight this VLOOKUP, we're going to get 1, because average will show you, average is 1 here, so we know that. Now, if we add 100 to that by 100 plus, we're going to get 101. So that's going to now be the average while ignoring hidden rows, and then the same function or the same range afterwards. There's one step further we can take this, um, and this would just make it you know kind of more versatile for the individual if they only want to see one result. So we have the ability to change count average sum. So now. Let's go back to average, we'll leave it on that one. Now we have the ability here, we can just this little checkbox that says ignore hidden cells and we see that it's functioning between the two. This is done with an if function. So we have the subtotal function. Within the subtotal, we've nested an if function. It's telling it if G58, so this here is true, it needs to return the 100 plus VLOOKUP. If it's false, it needs to return the regular VLOOKUP without the 100 plus. So it's the same thing we just built earlier, it just put them together with an if function and it lets you toggle between the two. The subtotal function in Google Sheets is super valuable. Um, it's often overlooked because it's not quite as simple and then by the time people are done with simple functions, they've moved on to the more complex things, it's kind of left behind because they know other ways of getting this information. 
However, it's not one to forget about or to be missed. It's really brilliant for working on any reporting systems that you might need to. It allows you to give the user some great functionality and great ability, um, making the reports more valuable to them. Because in the end, it's all about giving the data, making the data presentable and visible to the end user. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for the Google Sheets tutorial on how to use the subtotal function. Have a great day. Have a great day.